some news you can use. For those of you who've got something to write with, uh, I would suggest you write down the following dates. We're going to talk a little bit here in a second about uh, the cycles that happen in real estate. And this is primarily predicated on California. There's an event out here in California called the California Countdown, but a lot of the rest of the country mirrors what happens in the housing market uh, here. Uh, the dates I want you to put down are 1982, 1987, 1994, 2000, 2007, 2014, and then 2021 slash 22. We don't know exactly what's going to happen uh, this year or if what we expect to have happen happened last year or not. But let me go back and explain these things. California runs on what's called a seven-year cycle. Now, it's actually a seven or 14-year cycle. There's either a peak or a valley on seven-year increments. You go back and look at the market, and we were at a, back in 1982, we were at a horrible spot. Um, in, in the marketplace. That was the end of the actually little leftover from the Carter era where we had 20% interest rates. People couldn't afford houses. Housing was in the dumps. So that would have been a pit for us. Seven years later, roughly seven years later, uh, in 1987, actually we came out to be about five years later in that particular cycle, um, we were at a peak. Then we dropped for the next seven years or six or seven years. In 1994, we were in a valley. Um, we slid from that place down to 2000. That was our bottom of the market. And then 2007 was the height of the market. Uh, then we had the Great Depression, the Great Recession. And in 2014, we hit the bottom. In other words, from seven to 14, it took that period of time to bring the market down to where it basically bottomed out around 2014. Other parts of the country are gonna be slightly different, but we run on a pretty unique cycle here of seven or 14 years. Then the peak rose from 14 to either 2021 or this year, 2022. And we don't know exactly what that is yet. Some areas of California have already fallen from last year. Some fell last year, San Francisco, for example. Some of that was artificially created vis-a-vis -vis the, the COVID deal in response to COVID and, and all that type of thing. So we're slightly off of our cycle, but make no bones about it. We are at a peak or we've already hit the peak here in California. And so we will see uh, either seven more years till we hit the other peak or more likely what we've done the last two cycles is it took 14 years till we hit the peak again. So in other words, it will take seven years to get to the bottom and then seven more years to get back up to the top. So that's what I'm predicting right here today. This is not my formula. This is one that a uh, brilliant guy down here in Southern California, Orange County, came up with, Bruce Norris. Uh, he wrote a book called The California Countdown, and then he also wrote one called The California Comeback that talked about how long before it was going to drop and then how long before it comes back. And he has been right on this thing for 30-plus years. Um, actually, now it would be around 40 years. And uh, I think that's what we're, gonna, we're seeing. We're seeing that happen right now. Uh, for those of you who watched the news, you probably saw last night or this morning news come out that the Fed announced, and this was the last shoe to drop that we we're expecting, they announced that yes, home prices are going to drop um, later this year. So, you know, everybody except Zillow and a few of the, the real estate uh, shake and bake crowd out there are now calling for, you know, definitely a drop in, in housing prices later this year. Uh, there's a unique disconnect, however, between reality and um, what people are talking about. And here's here's what I, I saw a guy today talk about it. I think his name's Stephen Van Meter. Had, there's a YouTube video about it. Uh, pretty insightful guy. And if you can find that, I would take a look at that. He's a real estate investor. I think he's here in Southern California as well. Um, you've got a lot of these people in the country, especially home buyers that keep talking about housing is a great investment and it's time to buy because it's just gonna keep going up. Now, where does that come from? Well, glad you asked. Uh, from primarily the mainstream news media, which gets their feed from people like the National Association of Realtors and Zillow. These guys 
are blowing wind. They're, they're basically doing a pump and dump on themselves. Um, in most industries, it would be strictly illegal to do that, but they're talking up the market. And so people, the average Joe and Mary who want to buy a house, first time home buyers are hearing, we got to go buy now because it's going to be worth a lot more later on. Then when you actually talk to Joe and Mary and say, listen, what zip code do you want to buy in? Okay, great. Here's the average price of the house in that area. They're like, are you kidding me? There's no way I can afford that now uh, at all. And so, and then what's the payment going to be? And I guess calculated out. Now we're at 5% interest instead of 2.6. I can't afford that either. So you've got from the standpoint of what they're thinking and what they're talking, yes, I'm going to buy because market's going to go up. It's a great investment long-term and I'm at the bottom of the market. It's going to keep going up. And then you have the practicality, the walk portion. You have to talk and the walk. The walk is we're not going to buy because we can't afford it. Uh, not only from a price standpoint, but from a payment standpoint. And so that will eventually, those roosters will come home to roost. Those chickens will come home to roost at some point. And I think we're seeing that right now in a lot of communities across the country. Now, what's the play for us as investors? It's basically a buy and hold uh, position. If you can buy right and you can flip, especially in the lower priced entry market, that's the way to go. I would not recommend you guys do any kind of flips at a higher level or in the, the lower, very low priced houses. I think those are still risky areas, but I think there's a sweet spot in there and that's where you're still seeing, you know, multiple bids or people buying at the ask and that's at the starter home price, um, especially in some of the markets. And I think you're very safe in a lot of markets where the average price is $300,000 or less. So if you're in that kind of market, I think that's a safe space. Now. With that said, higher markets, how do you play them? If you can buy them subject to, uh, the rent game is a great deal. That's that's the hedge in a downward market is you own rental properties. One of the best way to own rentals without having to go to the bank is by buying them subject to. So I would recommend that you guys really drill down, learn that education and training that's in the course and uh, become proficient at buying subject to or with seller finance because these sellers who want to sell are gonna have a harder time selling because the buyers who wanna buy can't afford, if that makes any sense. Um, anyway, that's uh, that would be what I would recommend. And that is your news you can use for today, 21st of April, 2022.